We've covered the essentials of navigation in WPF MVVM applications, and we also covered some advanced concepts as well. So to summarize what we've done, I'm gonna be moving all the navigation infrastructure that we've set up in the series into my reusable MVVM Essentials NuGet package, which I also published in NuGet, so that we can quickly use navigation in our own projects. And then I'm gonna quickly scaffold out a project that uses my MVVM Essentials package to hopefully show how easy it is to set up navigation using this package. So the most important part of navigation is our navigation story and this holds the current view model of the application and then it raises an event whenever the current view model changes so that we can react to this and update the view. It also takes care of disposing of view models which we saw was important so the navigation store pretty reusable pretty basic. I'm going to move this over to my MVVM Essentials NuGet package so I'm going to create a new folder in my project for that package and this will be for the stores and we're gonna move over our navigation store. And I'm gonna leave this in my navigation MVVM project as well, just so that people don't get confused when they look at source control for this series. But here in my MVVM essentials project, I'm gonna update this namespace to be the MVVM essentials. And then view model base, I also have in my MVVM essentials. So I can just import that and get rid of these stale using statements. The other core piece of functionality we have is the modal navigation store. So this shows the current view model that will be displayed in our modal pop-up. It also tells us if the modal is open, we can close the modal by setting the current view model to null, and then we raise events whenever the current view model changes. So not every application is gonna have a modal, but I still feel like I should move this into my MVVM Essentials because this is all highly reusable. So let's move that to the stores folder in MVVM Essentials, update our namespace, and import the correct view models namespace for our view model base. And that should be everything we need for the stores. Next up, let's look at commands. And the most important command that we have and the only one we have for navigation is the navigate command. So this just takes a navigation service, which we'll get into in a little bit, and simply navigates whenever the command is executed. So this is definitely something I wanna move over to my MVVM essentials, drop it in the commands directory and update the namespace. And right now we do not have an iNavigation service in our MVVM Essentials project. So that is actually the next thing we're gonna add. Let's create a new folder in our project for services. And the first thing we're gonna move over is our iNavigation service, which is just a general interface that does our navigation. So let's just move that to our services folder and update the namespace. So now back in the navigate command, we can import that navigation service. So the most basic navigation service we have is our navigation service. And this simply takes our navigation store and a function to create a view model. And whenever we navigate, we set the current view model on our navigation store to the view model that we create using this func that gets passed in. So we are gonna move this to our MVVM essentials. Again, very reusable. Let's update the namespace. And before we move on here, I actually have a create view model delegate defined in my view models folder for this project. So rather than using func, we can use this create view model delegate as our type for the function. And it pretty much does the same thing as a func that returns a TV model. But I think the naming of create view model is much easier to understand than func. It just reads a little bit better. The next navigation service we have is the modal navigation service, but I'm looking at this and if we compare this to the existing navigation service, so not for modals, they pretty much do the same exact thing they just set the current view model to whatever view model we create. The only difference is we're using a modal navigation service. So instead, in our navigation service, we could just depend on some kind of I navigation store and I navigation store can just have a current view model property that we set and then the modal navigation store could implement that interface and then navigation store could also implement that interface. So that is exactly what we're gonna do. Let's actually just extract navigation store to an interface and the only thing we want is current view model. And right now we don't even need a getter, we just need a setter. That's all our navigation service has to do. And let's also implement that on the modal navigation store. It is an I navigation store. And of course we already implement it because we have this current view model property. And now we have our navigation service, which is gonna work for the modal navigation store and the navigation store because they both implement this interface. So that being said, we actually don't have to move over the modal navigation service. The next navigation service to look at is our layout navigation service. And I'm actually a bit hesitant to move this over to my MVVM essentials because this involves layouts and navigation bars. And I feel like that's all very specific to an application. I'm questioning the reusability there. So I'm not gonna move that over actually. However, we do have our composite navigation service 
which takes in a collection of navigation services. And then we execute navigate on all of those navigation services. So we can do multiple navigation operations, such as closing a modal and navigating to a different page. So this is highly reusable. We are gonna move this over and update the namespace. We also have our close modal navigation service. And this just takes our modal navigation store and closes it on navigation. That's pretty reusable. Let's move that over and update the namespace. The last navigation service we have is our parameter navigation service. And this allows us to navigate with a parameter that gets passed to this navigate method that we can use to create our view model. The only issue I have with the parameter navigation service is that it doesn't implement I navigation service because this navigate method doesn't match the signature of I navigation service. We have this parameter argument. And since it doesn't implement I navigation service, that means we cannot use it for our navigate command. But that's actually not an issue because in this navigate command, we don't really have a parameter to pass in anyways. The only place the parameter navigation service will be useful will be in a specific command implementation, such as the login command. Maybe we want to navigate with the user's account and use a parameter navigation service here. But in the navigate command, we don't really have anything to pass to this navigate method. So I think that's okay. We are gonna move over the parameter navigation service. I am a fan of it. So let's drop that in here, update the namespace. And we're using func again. I'm gonna create a new create view model. So let's go to create view model and we're gonna create another delegate except this one is gonna have a T parameter argument and it'll take that T parameter as an argument to the method. So there we go, reads a little bit nicer. So we're good on stores, we're good on services, we're good on commands. Don't wanna move over any components because that's all application specific. UI isn't really reusable in this case. And the last thing we have is view models. So I did mention we're not gonna be moving over any layout or navigation bar logic because that's all application specific in my opinion. But this main view model does seem like something that we could reuse. So this just provides the view with the current view model for the application, the current modal view model, and tells us if the modal is open or not, and also responds to all those changes. So pretty simple, I could see myself reusing this. So I am gonna move this over to my view models folder and update the namespace. So we have everything we need in our MVVM Essentials project, and now I'm gonna package this up, publish it to NuGet, so that we can use it in our own applications, which I'm gonna demonstrate in just a second. So let's pack it and push it. And while we're waiting for that to validate, let's set up a project that's gonna use those MVVM essentials and implement navigation. So this is gonna be a WPF app. I'll call it navigation MVVM essentials demo. And we're gonna create a views folder and have two views in here. So we're gonna have the home view, just a user control and the account view. And then we're gonna have view models for those views as well. The home view model and the account view model. Let's configure our app startup. So we're gonna get rid of the startup URI and app.xaml and do the startup in one startup. So let's override that in our app. Set the main window to our main window, let's instantiate that. And eventually we'll set the data context of this to be a main view model. But for now, let's go into our main window and do the mapping between our views and view models. So set our grid resources. We're gonna have data templates and we wanna map from our view models. So we're gonna need our view models namespace in here. We'll call that VMs and just point the view models. We're also gonna need our views in just a second. So let's get views set up in here. That's our views namespace. So the home view model in our VMs namespace is gonna map to the home view. And then the account view model is gonna map to the account view. And then we'll have a content control that's gonna show our current view model. So the data context for this will be a main view model, which will have a current view model property. And I think this is as far as we can get without our MVVM Essentials NuGet package. Let's go ahead and get that installed. We want MVVM Essentials dot WPF. There we go. Version 1.0.3. Let's install that. So the first thing we want to do is inherit from view model based on our view models. So import that same thing for the account view model. And then the account view model is going to have a command. So an I command to navigate home. So the navigate home command, and we'll set this up in the constructor. So it's just going to be a navigate command import that from our MVVM essentials. And that's gonna need a home navigation service, which we will get through the constructor. Make sure we import I navigation service. And then our home view model is gonna do the opposite. So let's just copy this, except this is gonna be the navigate account command. And we're gonna take an account 
navigation service. Make sure we import everything. I think that's all we have to set up. Now we just need to configure everything in our app.xaml.cs. So we want the data context for our main window to be a main view model, and that'll need a navigation store and a modal navigation store. We'll put those in fields and initialize these in the constructor. And on startup, we have to set our initial view model. So we will need an I navigation service to do that initial navigation. And in our case, I want this to be the home navigation service. So let's create a method to create a home navigation service. And then we'll take that navigation service and do the initial navigation. But let's create our new navigation service. This will be for a home view model. We can pass in our navigation store and we need a function to create a home view model. So let's create that function, generate that, just return a home view model. Now this takes an account navigation service. So we're gonna create an account navigation service, generate that method. Let's create that navigation service for the account view model. And we need a function to create an account view model. So let's generate that method and return the account view model. And that takes a home navigation service. Well, we can create one of those. So there we go. Kind of weird to scaffold all of this out. I guess that still is the hard part, but pretty easy to set up. I forgot we have to set up our views. Can't forget that. So we'll just have a text block that says home and a button that says account and binds to the navigate account command. Let's get some margin on here and then do the same thing on the account view, except switch it around. This is account as the title, home as the button content and uses the navigate home command. All right, I think that's everything we need. Let's test this out. Oh, and we forgot to show our main window. That would be important. So do a main window dot show. Oh, and we're using grid. So everything is just literally on top of each other because we don't have rows in here. So let's just throw a stack panel in here. That's an easy way to do that. So there we go, we're on the home page. go to account, and there we go, we're on the account page. So pretty lame demo, but just wanted to show off how you can apply the MVVM Essentials NuGet package to your own project so that you don't have to reinvent the wheel for navigation every time you scaffold out a project. As for myself, I know I will definitely be using it, so hopefully you find it useful as well. But until further notice, this is where we're gonna wrap up our journey of navigation in WPF MVVM applications. If you have any questions, criticisms, or concerns, be sure to leave them below in the comments section. If you enjoyed the video or are enjoying the channel, consider becoming a member. Other than that, leave a like or subscribe for more. Thank you.